Hey guys, Eric Martel here. I'm going to be telling you exactly what you need to know to invest in real estate in 2022. Can you do it yourself? Absolutely. Do you have the money? Do you have the time? Does it work for anybody? Absolutely. Over the last 20 years, I tried all kinds of different businesses to generate passive income. Nothing compared to rental real estate. The market is very different this year with the pandemic, the economy, the inflation. I'm going to share with you the five tips to help you navigate this uncertain time. I'm all about financial freedom. I think that everybody's number one goal should be to achieve financial freedom because it's inevitable. I bought my first apartment building when I was only 18 years old. No money down and still cash flowing. That means that I was still making money after I paid all my expenses. I was able to do that because I learned exactly what made an apartment building or a rental property profitable and cash flowing. I got a wake up call when I lost millions of dollars in the dot com crash in 2000. This made me realize that I needed to take control of my future and investing in rental real estate was the best way to achieve that because I control the asset and I knew that it would generate passive income for me and my family. Why passive income is so important is because I believe that everybody's number one goal should be to achieve financial freedom. And you can only achieve that by building a passive income portfolio. The best investment for that is rental real estate. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to watch more videos like this, where I explain exactly what you need to do in order to achieve financial freedom like I did. Remember, everything I'm telling you, I've done myself and I've had great success doing it. Without further ado, here are my five most important tips for investing in real estate in 2022. My first step is to really be clear about your goal and make sure that you have a strategy that is aligned with it. Too often I'm talking to people who are interested in financial freedom and so other goals, but they're using strategies, investment strategies that are not aligned with that. They're not going to get there. For example, if you're trying to achieve financial freedom and you are flipping houses, for example, this is not a passive income strategy. You have to continuously do flips in order to make some income. What's important to remember is that you have to be clear about your goals and you have to have a strategy that's going to get you to that goal. For example, I believe that everybody's number one goal should be to achieve financial freedom. And how I define my goal is really looking at how much money do I need to make in passive income in order to achieve that goal. For me, my target was $10,000 a month in passive income. Your numbers might be different. Once I figured out that goal, all I had to do then is look at all the different passive income strategies out there and then pick the right one for me. So one of the first one that people are talking about is short term rentals. This is basically either having a property that you put on Airbnb or VRBO or it's uh, renting a room in your house, also putting it on Airbnb or VRBO. So short term rentals, obviously the attraction is that you're going to make more in terms of rental gross rent. But what people often forget is that short term rental is a customer service business. So if you're not somebody that is uh, really interested in servicing customers and having good customer satisfaction, this may not be an investment for you. Yes, the returns are great, but in the end, you have to spend a lot of time marketing your property and making sure that your customers are satisfied in order for you to have a good rating on Airbnb and VRBO so that your property is listed at the very top. If you are genuinely interested in your customers, this would be a good investment for you. If you have a full time job and don't have a lot of time and you're really looking at the numbers and the returns and how much profit you're going to make, this investment is probably not for you. The other strategy is long term rental. So this is a pretty common strategy where you're basically buying somebody else's rental property. This strategy requires you to really research your market, research the property in the neighborhood, make sure that you're investing, you're buying the right property in the right neighborhood at the right price and that you can get the rent that you're looking for. This would include a strategy called Burr, which where you buy a distressed property, renovating it, renting it out, refinancing it and then repeating the process. This would be good for an investor that has a lot more time to dedicate to the investment because you need to uh, research quite a bit to find the right property, the right neighborhood, as I mentioned earlier, but you also need to find the right contractor. You need to manage the contractor to make sure that the 
the project is done with the quality that you need. And you have to find a property management company that you can trust is going to take care of everything for you. You don't want to have a bad contractor or a bad property management company because this is going to cost you a lot of money. It has happened to a lot of people, but it hasn't happened to me because we spend a lot of time doing our due diligence. Another strategy is turnkey rental properties. So this is my favorite, especially for people who are working full time because you don't have that much time. You don't have time to find a contractor, manage the renovation project, find the property management company. All you have to do is find a reputable turnkey provider and they're going to manage the whole process for you. A turnkey provider will actually buy the distressed property, renovate it, rent it out, and then sell it to you fully rented and connect all the dots in between. They're going to connect you with the lender, the insurance company, as well as the property management company. So it is a little bit more expensive and your returns are going to be slightly lower than if you do a burr strategy. It's definitely the best strategy if you work full time because the turnkey provider is going to do all the heavy lifting for you. Another strategy that's often discussed is flipping houses where you're buying a distressed property, renovating it and then selling it to someone else. There are a couple of things wrong with flipping houses. First of all, if your goal is to achieve financial freedom, you have to constantly flip houses in order to, to make money. So this is not going to give you the passive income that you need so that you can travel and spend more time with friends and family. The other problem is that if you're working full time, it, Flipping houses requires a lot of effort and a lot of time. You have to find the property. You have to find the scope, determine the scope of work for the renovation. You have to manage the contractor and making sure that everything is done with the right quality. You have to put a house back on the market and negotiate that. And then you have to do it again. It is hard work to do it right. My second tip is to focus on long term strategy. Especially in 2022, as we are approaching a kind of a time of uncertainty with the pandemics, with the inflation and all of that, focusing on a long term strategy is going to ensure success. I know for a fact that a house that I bought today is going to be more valuable 20 years from now. But honestly, I can't tell you if it's going to be more valuable in six months from now. As interest rates rise, the demand for housing is probably going to go down and the price of houses are also going to go down. But if you're focusing on the long term, it doesn't matter because I know that 20 years from now, the house value is going to be higher than it is today. So if you buy a rental property today and it's cash flowing, let's say it's cash flowing $500 a month. And then all of a sudden you, the value of your property goes down in half. And it's now worth $50,000. The rent is still being paid. Your mortgage is still the same. It's still cash flowing $500 to you. As long as you don't sell your property, you'll be fine. You're still going to be cash flowing and the value will increase over time. Tip number three is to pick an investment strategy that fits the time and money that you have available today, not tomorrow. Time and money are very important. You don't want to find yourself owning a short term rental property and having to market it, having to talk to the customer and making sure that you have the right rate for the month of July and all of that and doing all this analysis when you already have a full time job, you have a family and kids and all, only have like five hours to dedicate. This is a formula for failure. So you want to find an investment that works with the time and money that you have available. So let's talk about time. So how much time do you really have available? to dedicate to that strategy. Everybody has 168 hours in a week. You remove the time that you work, the time that you commute, the time that you sleep and eat and talk to your friend and family. You're left with about five or 10 hours. Let's be realistic. What kind of strategy can you implement when you only have five or 10 hours a week to dedicate to it? You have to find something that's simple to implement and manage so that you are successful. If you don't have enough time to dedicate to it and something happens, you have some kind of problems to resolve, you won't be able to do it. It's going to delay your project or it's going to cost you more money to fix it. Next, you want to look at how much money you have to invest. So typically you would look at your bank account, but you can also invest from your 401k or self-directed IRA. So you could look at these accounts as well. So let's say you look at all these accounts and you come up with a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. From that amount, how much are you willing to invest so that you can sleep at night? So risk is a personal thing. For me, I sold my house 
to really to invest everything in real estate rentals. I didn't need a safety net. I knew this was the right choice for me and I was ready to jump in. But make sure that you have a couple of months of emergency fund in case something doesn't work out. If you're working full time, my recommendation is to pick a strategy that's going to require the least amount of time. And overall, invest in a strategy that's going to require the least amount of money that's going to bring you the highest return. On to the next point, maximize your long term leverage. So how do you maximize your leverage? The first tip is really about looking for equity. Do you have equity left over on your primary residence that you can leverage? Maybe you want to refinance your house to get that equity out and put it to work. Should you refinance your property to spread your money out and reinvest it? Right now, it would be the perfect time to do it because right now the interest rates are at the lowest that we've seen in a while and they're more likely to go up in the future. Now, should you take out a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit to invest in real estate long term? So make sure that you check the terms on your HELOC. Some of the HELOCs out there have an adjustable rate with a very high cap. That means that if the interest rate goes up to five, six, seven percent or even 10 percent in hyperinflation, that means that your interest payment on your HELOC would also go up to these interest rate. Are you willing to pay this kind of interest rate on that HELOC? The answer is probably no. Should you get a HELOC? Only in certain circumstances. Rates are slated to rise by 4% by 2024. Now is the time to lock in your long-term rate. And for the last point, invest where it makes sense, not where you live. You have to think like an investor. And what does an investor do? They look at the best market for their investment, the one that would provide the highest return with the lowest risk. So for rental real estate, what markets have the best returns for cash flow? Well, we're looking for landlord friendly states. We're looking for cities that have strong business diversification, that have sustainable growth in terms of the economy as well as the demographics. Investing in a city with sustainable growth makes it easier to find properties at a reasonable price. So if you look at a city that doesn't have a sustainable growth, that's growing very rapidly, what happens is that the demand for real estate and for rentals is so high that there's not enough supply in the city to meet that demand, which this causes the price of the houses, the price of the rental to go straight up. And it makes it very hard for an investor like me to find a property where it makes sense, where the numbers make sense. If you live in a big city with very high demand where everybody's talking about moving in, this is probably not the right city to invest. You want to look for something that is a little bit more stable, more sleepy town, and uh, that still has good business diversification, low unemployment, and it's still a very good city, but it just doesn't have this exuberant growth that's going to throw everything off kilter. So if you live in California, New York, Washington state, you know, don't even bother to look for real estate rentals that that going to cash flow and have a great return because you're not going to be able to find cash flowing rental properties with a return above 8% in these states. And they're not landlord friendly. Remember, time is the ultimate commodity. Do you want to spend your time at work in a cubicle or do you want to spend it with friends and family and travel around the world? This is why I think your number one goal should be to achieve financial freedom and you need to invest in real estate rentals in order to do that and build a passive income portfolio. I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to show you exactly what strategy I'm using, what accounts and deals I'm doing so you can check the numbers for yourself and do what I do. So make sure that you like and subscribe. Thank you and see you soon.